Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcasting Network, located at www.jobn.tv, where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. In the last days, there is a great deception. We have a book called The Great Deception. If you haven't read it, we would strongly urge you to get it and simply go to the website. The great deception in the last days is that God himself will send strong delusion that they all might be damned who receive not the love of the truth. They, they might be saved but have pleasure in unrighteousness. The love of the truth is not just having truth, it's the love of the truth. The love that is stronger than death, that you will literally seal your testimony with your own blood, not denying him, even unto death. For well, they will overcome the Antichrist by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Well, somebody said, that's not a popular gospel. Oh, yes, if a man really believes, believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will literally die for that faith. Just as the early church did, so will we do in the last days. That we see this broadcast is the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of godliness is Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1, 27. But what is this mystery? This mystery of iniquity that will literally overthrow many in the last days. For the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith. Well, they had to be in the faith to depart from it. Given heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, Forbidding to marry and abstaining from meats, which God has sanctified by the word of God in prayer. As we get into the broadcast, we know that there is a work in the last days called the work of the ministry. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, the Jesus ministry, the revelation of Jesus Christ that will be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. When we see this Christ generation that shall be counted for the seed, the church of the living God coming to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ unto a perfect man. We see in Matthew 1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. This is Jesus Christ fulfilling the word of God that was written of him in the volume of the book, I come to do thy will, O God, for a body that has prepared me. God prepared himself a body. Manifest in flesh. The invisible God made manifest, visible in and through the Son of God, which is the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Now, what is the work of the ministry? Jesus was cut off in the midst of the week, but not for himself. And in that midst of the week, he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He fulfilled that law, nailing the ordinance of that law to his cross, Thereby the twain, that is God and all of his creation, making one new man. When we see this generation of Jesus Christ, that's literal seed of David, according to the flesh, Psalm 132, 11, For the Lord hath sworn unto David, and will not turn from it, that have the fruit of thy body, David. Well, I, God himself, set upon thy throne. This is what we're going to see in the millennial but before that time comes, before the day of the Lord, there is a great work in this gospel of the kingdom being preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. Let's say get into the broadcast. When we take a look at the generation of Jesus Christ, that generation that shall be counted for the seed, that will literally be manifest in and through the body of Christ, the church. When we see here... There are 14 generations, 14 generations uh, that are going uh, from Abraham to David, 14 generations, and then from David uh, into the carrying away into Babylon, that's 14 generations, and then the third set of generations being the carrying away into Babylon under Christ of 14 generations. Well, let's take a good look at that because there is a revelation there. When we see the 14 generations there, going from Abraham to David, 
14 generations, just as it said there. Then from David to the carrying away into Babylon, another 14 generations. But let's take a good look at the last set of uh, 14. That last set of uh, from, from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ. As we look, we see that from the carrying away to Babylon, Salathiel, there to Abayu, to Elikim, to Azer, to Zadok, to Kian, to Eliud, Eliezer, Mathen, Jacob, which is the 12th, and then Jesus being the 13th, and then Christ being the 14th generation. There is Jesus now, as it was in the days of his flesh for three and one half years of the work of the ministry, now being another three and one half years fulfilled in that week of Jesus or seven years uh, through that seed, that Christ generation. That's the work of the ministry. It's the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. As we get into the broadcast, we want to make sure that we have the revelation of the true Christ that we will be able to denounce the Antichrist, which will deceive the whole world. Not part of the world which deceiveth the whole world. As we see here in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, so you see there are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel. Paul said no marvel. Why? For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Oh my, what deception. My goodness, well, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Do you mean that Satan will try to literally imitate God? That it will be such a strong delusion that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived? Simply because we do not have the love of the truth that we might be saved, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Therefore, we need to make our election and calling sure. Take a look at Matthew 24. It's going to be the same in Mark 13, Luke 10, Luke 21. We're going to find in Matthew 24, 12, iniquity is going to abound. Because of that, the love of many will wax cold. How many will be deceived? Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. <clears throat> Why? Because this is a time of sorrows. That sorrows is birth pain that we see in Revelation 12, where is the man-child birthed in and through the church to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ unto a perfect man. When it talks about this Gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all world for witness in all nations, and then the end will come. We have to see something. When we therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand, not Jerusalem encompassed about with armies, about there to be made desolate, when the Lord will come the second time without sin and salvation, destroying all those that are against Israel. But this revelation of uh, this Jesus Christ showing us the abomination of desolation that stands in the holy place. Neighbor, we have to see and understand the work of God. And Jesus said, whosoever readeth, let him understand. <clears throat> These things are written for our admonition, for our understanding. Then, why? For... There will be a time of false Christ. It is a time of great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. There will arise false Christ, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders. And we're going to find in 2 Thessalonians the same thing said, that wicked one that will be revealed, that son of perdition, that man of sin, with signs, miracles, and lying wonders. Insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. How do we guard ourselves? We must stand in the revelation of Christ, the true Christ, that revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Take a look here in 2 Thessalonians 2. This is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him, the rapture, if you will. That you be not soon shaken to mind of trouble spirit by the word or letter us from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you. Why? Because there will be a great deception in the last days with an antichrist, false Christ, something in lieu of Christ. It will be a false Christ. It will look like light. It will look like it's the Lord, but it'll be strong delusion that God himself will send because we receive not the love of the truth. We might be saved, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There will be a falling away first, just as spoke in 1 Timothy 4.1. The Spirit speaketh expressly. In the latter days, some shall depart from the faith. And that man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. <clears throat> Notice, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Neighbor, that's a capital G-O-D. Or that is worship, so that he as God. That is a capital G-O-D. Set it in the temple of God, and that temple there is not Hieron, a literal physical temple. He does not use Hieron. He writes naos. That naos is which temple we are. Standing in that holy place where it ought not, it should not. The abomination of the desolate that maketh the desolate. That transgression of desolation. Showing himself that he is God. There is Satan transforming himself into an angel of light. A great deception. And God is the one sending it because they receive not the love of the truth. They may have truth, but they don't love it. Love it is that you will literally go all the way unto death and not deny your Lord. He says that... Remember you not when I was yet with you, I told you these things. These are the things of faith. The faith is the substance of things so far, the evidence of things not seen. We're earnestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. But we find also there in Revelation 13 that those that lead into captivity shall go into captivity. Those that killed you with the sword must be killed by the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That is why it's so necessary for us to know these things that the Lord is showing us in the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him, John, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, sent and signified it by his angel unto John, Jehovah favored in the ministry of Elijah that must first come and restore all things before the Lord comes the second time without sin and salvation. Only ye, now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for that mystery of iniquity. There's the, what we're talking about today with the program. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now lets will let. That is not the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost, Jesus, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Son, which is the Spirit of the Father, the one Spirit of God, will be with us until the end of the age, until the end of the world. Matthew 28, 19 Go ye into all the world, teaching them to observe all things what are commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That name is Jesus. And uh, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Well, the Holy Ghost is going to be with us until the end. It won't be a pre-tribulation rapture, but it's going to be to the end. That's the reason it is so necessary to have the resealing of God to the servants of our God in their foreheads uh, for these great perilous times that are coming upon the earth to try the earth, O oh, earth, 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 here, ye the word of the Lord. That wicked will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. Notice, <clears throat> even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, that if it were possible, it would deceive him the very elect with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. They might know truth, but not love it. Will you die for it? Will you go all the way, sealing your testimony with your own blood, with those under the fifth seal, slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held? These are the ones under that altar in heaven, 
said, O Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before thy avenge our blood upon them that dwell on the earth? White robes of righteousness were given to each one of them and said unto your fellow servants and your brethren that should be killed as you were should be fulfilled. Right? Blessed be he that dieth in the Lord. Yea, henceforth and forever saith the Spirit that he may rest from his labors his works do follow him. Well, it's a time of trouble. A time that they will be prevailed against the saints and truth will be cast to the ground. It's a time of trouble, a time of great tribulation. And this cause, for this cause, God himself shall send them strong delusion, just like it did with Micaiah on <clears throat> that battle with Ahab and Jehoshaphat were going up to that battle at Ramoth Gilead. All the other prophets of Baal said, go ye up, go ye up. God has surely delivered them in your hand. But it didn't sound right to Jehoshaphat. He said, is now yet not another prophet? Ahab said, yes, but he always speaks bad things to me. Let him not say so. Go get him. The prophets told Micaiah, speak good words. We've already prophesied that Ahab and the army there of Judah and Israel will take Ramoth Gilead. Micaiah said, whatever the Lord speaks, that's what I will speak. When he got up there, he may mocked it and to Ahab said, Go up, go up to Ramoth Gilead. God hath given them into your hand. And Ahab said, I adjure you to tell, to speak the truth. And Micaiah said, I saw the Lord. And those around him said, Who will go down to Ahab and make him fall at Ramoth Gilead? This one said this, another one said that. One of the angels said, I will go down, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. The Lord said, go. Who sent it? God did. Why? Because that they should believe a lie, because they've received not the love of the truth. Charity rejoices in the truth. The truth above all things, thy word is truth. It's a spirit of truth. That literally the word of God sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That they all might damn who, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Don't go for the prosperity message. Go for the cross message. The cross that he that is called of God, you're not only called to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer for his name's sake. That tribulation worketh patience, patience worketh experience, experience worketh hope. Hope maketh not shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. Paul said with this way, We're troubled on every side, but not in distress, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus. That's the true cross. Crucifying your flesh with the affections and the lust. Not building up your flesh buying houses and lands and being rich toward yourself and not rich toward God. It is called a sacrificial life to sacrifice your life for the cause of the gospel, for the cause of Christ. Whosoever will seek to save his life will lose it. Whosoever loses his life for the gospel's sake, the same shall find it. While well, we which live are always delivered unto death, that the life of our Lord Jesus may be manifest in our mortal bodies. This is the time we're preparing for. Why? Because a time of evil. A time there of this horn, this antichrist. That beast likened to a leopard. Feet of a bear. His mouth, the mouth of a lion. Everything that we're seeing in Daniel 7, Daniel 8, and Daniel 11 coming to pass in the last days. <clears throat> and the dragon. That's a false father. You got a dragon a beast, that's a false son, and the false prophet, which is a false Holy Ghost, gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Notice that Satan's seat is in Pergamum in Revelation 2. It is not in heaven. Our seats, we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But Satan's seat is there in Pergamum. So they're literally in the holy place, in the church where it ought not. I saw one of his heads wounded to death. His daily wound was healed. The world wandered after the beast. Not the church. The world does. They worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, false son, 
a false Christ, they worship the beast. Who's like another beast who's able to make war with him? It was given him a mouth. That's the pay. In the Hebrew, it's a mouth. Speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. That is a time, times, the biting of a time, or three and one half years. At the very time that the saints of the living God are coming into the greatest move of the Spirit of God in that manifestation of Jesus in and through the body of Christ and the work of the ministry is the very time that Satan will stand up to devour that child as soon as it's born and there will be the battle of the ages and God will literally destroy this man of sin at his coming. Notice it was given unto him, that Antichrist, to make war with the saints. That's the church to overcome them. Power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Here is the faith and patience of the saints. Notice Revelation 13, 10. He leaves into captivity, shall go into captivity. He that killed you with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Don't be deceived. There's a great work ahead. Uh, and let's all enter into it. Till the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold, the real Jesus. Praise God, neighbor. You might be interested in sending the gospel of Jesus Christ and fulfilling the divine commandment of God in the commission to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ into all the world for a witness and all nations. And then the end will come. If you would like to support missions work in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we would like for you to become a partner with Dennis Beard Ministry. We not only bring that gospel to them in crusades and outdoor meetings preaching to the people, but as you can see, we have a Jesus-only training course. It breaks them down into four study manuals with eight accompanying DVDs for the ministers and the serious Bible students in the various countries to get the meat of the word. And then they, the ministers, can bring it to the people. Just as Jesus broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and the disciples to the people. We concentrate on the ministers, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. To get them the revelation of Jesus Christ, and them to put that to the people, the real Jesus. As you can see, we have training classes. This has gone all throughout Africa. We have over 750 pastors there now as well as India, Pakistan, Nepal, Philippines, and they're begging for us to come. It is a matter of finances, neighbor. We need your help. The more that we can receive in donations for the ministry of Jesus Christ and that preaching of the gospel, bringing it to the people, then we are able to go and we have over 12 ministers here in the Dennis Beard Ministry team, the DBM team. We have classes for the ministers, and they'll come from as far as 12 nations away just to be in a class as it was here in Katali. We have ministers from all over Africa that literally drove and flew in for the training courses. Again, this is giving the Jesus-only ministry to the pastors and then them delivering it to the people. We also meet with government officials. Here is our governor, Rasanga Amav, in Siaya, the governor of Siaya, in Kenya, met with us and we addressed his board of politicians there in his Monday meeting, starting off the week, and as we addressed the ministers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, the Muslims are there also, as well as uh, uh, the, the various doctors of Hindu, etc., but we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, break it down to them so the politicians will know that the nation that is righteousness, God will lift up. It's a sin, is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation. And let the politicians see that there's a blessing in serving the real Jesus. We also give out certificates to the people, the ministers, that have completed the courses and they would complete the Jesus only training course, then they receive a certificate there of their completion of that course 
enabling them to have that revelation of Jesus Christ to give to the people. We've done that all throughout Africa, everywhere from Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Kenya, uh, there's the Congo, Tanzania, and you'll find more and more pictures there of where the ministers are very proud to be receiving this gospel of Jesus Christ to bring to their churches. We also help feed the orphans. As you see here in the pictures there, the orphans, the children, there is a great need, not only in Africa, but India as well, and Pakistan. And we preach that gospel of Jesus Christ to these young children, as we also feed them. And by doing so, we have a captive audience where they can hear the good news of Jesus Christ also. We're appealing you, appealing to you, the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ to help us send this gospel to these nations. Uh, we have right now over 2,000 pastors begging us, requesting us to come to their nations. It is an impossible task for us to do alone. We bring it to you, an opportunity to reach Africa, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Philippines, all of these nations begging for us to come for the training of the ministers as well as the people in crusades. You can reach that and donate and become a partner with the Dennis Spirit Ministry team, bringing this gospel of Jesus Christ into all the world for a witness in all nations by simply going to the website, www.dennisbeard.org, and they're making a donation. We would like for you to partner with us monthly. If you can give a donation, whatever it is, will be greatly appreciated. And you will become, by being a partner with us, we will give you updates on the ministry each month of the souls that you are reaching with the true Jesus. We count on you and pray God bless you. And until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus.